tiny kitchen so today we're gonna to be making the lentil loaf and the creamy mashed potatoes for our Christmas dinner again all of these recipes are SOS free so there's no salt no added sugar and no oil obviously but if you want to add salt to them you totally can so I kind of thought about this like so much how I'm gonna do this because when I have my induction cooktop on and my air fryer on it's really loud in here I already have the generator on and I know a lot of you guys are saying in the last video like oh my gosh the generator is so loud it's so distracting but really there's nothing that I can do about it so when we get solar energy it'll be a lot more quiet but for now I don't know I need I need to figure out we have an external mic but I need to figure out how to use it so it's my bad I'm sorry so the first thing that we're gonna make today is the lentil loaf and I already have most of the ingredients prepped here so I'm just kind of going to tell you guys what's in it. Like I said at the very end, when I'm done with all these recipes, I'll be doing like a massive blog post. Derek just walked in. Do you want to say hi? He's like, no. <laughs> so I will be doing a big blog post and I wanted to get all these um, recipes out before Christmas so that you guys have them so that you can prepare and decide if you like want to actually even make them and all of that good stuff. So the first thing that we need for our lentil loaf is some lentils. So we're gonna be using a cup of brown lentils. We are just going to pour this into a pan. And then I've made lentil loaves in the past and I really like them when they're more like a, like a meatloaf. Meatloaf, again, was one of my like favorite things growing up. I don't know why, I don't know how I ever ate it, but I loved it because I was a Minnesota girl. We were like meat and potatoes. That's why, you know, all those fruity diets never worked for me because I really love savory, hearty, rich foods. We're gonna add a half of a cup of red lentils as well. And these red lentils, the difference between them is red lentils really like soak up a lot of the water in whatever you're cooking. So whenever you cook something with red lentils, it's basically just gonna like absorb all the water. Um, brown lentils more act like a bean or a legume, so they kind of just expand. Um, but they don't really like soak up water and make things thicker. That's why we're using both because meatloaf is like a really like meaty, thick dish. So I also have one carrot that I just chopped up really, really finely. All these ingredients you're gonna just like want to chop up as finely as you can because I'm not going to be using a food processor. Just to make it simpler and less dishes to do, I also have two stalks of celery that I finally, finally minced as good as I possibly can. And then we also have half of a red onion that I just diced as well. So we're just going to put all of this into our bowl here. So the next thing that I'm going to do is make a flax egg really quick and this is just going to help when everything's done cooking to help kind of bind it all together. So we're just going to use three tablespoons of flaxseed and six tablespoons of water and just stir it together and then let it sit until it becomes kind of like a like an egg. So we're also going to need one bell pepper finely chopped. I just didn't have another bowl to put this in so I figured you guys could watch me chop it. And in the fridge I only had half of a um, orange one and half of a red bell pepper so you know just use what you have on hand. <laughs> The colors don't really matter. I feel like yellow, red, and orange kind of all taste the same, but green bell peppers are like the unripe bell peppers, so those ones usually taste a bit different. All right, so we've got all of our veggies in here, and the next thing that we're gonna do is just add in our water and give it like a really good stir. So for this, we're gonna be using three cups of water. People kept asking what this thing is. It's just a Berkey water filter. So, people were also saying that my hair looked like shit in the last video. <laughs> and I agree with you. So since we moved out here, my hair has been kind of, like the water that we got transferred in because we haven't started doing rainwater catchment yet, has just been, I don't know, it's like this really murky kind of well water. 
So my hair just has not been doing very good with it. And it was just so gross. Like it just felt really just like stuck together and like greasy and the ends were kind of dry and it was just like so i got four inches cut off my hair because i haven't had it cut in literally forever i did use some dr bronner's in my hair last night so now it kind of looks better so yeah i guess the whole no poo thing kind of went out the window but what are you gonna do so i have a bunch of seasonings for this recipe as well but we're gonna add them in at the end what I'm gonna do right now is just process some oats so that it can act as more of a like binding agent when we're ready to mix it all together and put it in the loaf pans. So I'm just gonna use a cup and a half, lightly process these and then set them aside. Did I say lightly process? I meant really process. So you basically just want an oat flour um but you can leave some chunks in there as well so what we use out here for cooking is an induction cooktop i'm just going to bring this to a boil and then reduce the heat to a simmer and then cook it until all the water absorbs and then while that's cooking i'm just going to chop up my potatoes so for the mashed potatoes i'm using about a pound and a half of these yukon gold potatoes and i find that these are the creamiest when you're making like something like mashed potatoes. So I always use these. Then we're just gonna add our seasonings into this bowl. So we have a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. I'm going to use a tablespoon of fennel. And then we have one teaspoon of onion powder. And this is totally optional, but I always like to add half a teaspoon of cayenne because we like everything super spicy. Also going to add in my flax egg and just stir all of that around. And while this is cooking, you're just gonna wanna give it a few good stirs to make sure nothing is sticking to the bottom. All right, so what I'm going to do now is just add this into the seasonings and flax seed. And then I'm actually gonna use this same pan to boil my potatoes. So I'll get those going in a second. We're just gonna stir it around to get all the seasonings and everything nice incorporated. And then we'll add in our oats to just make it a lot thicker and really solidify it like a meatloaf. Smells so good in here. I know a lot of people blend these, like they'll blend them in their, um, food processor when they're done but honestly like that that just makes a big mess we ain't got time for messes do we Bubba? but i think that i'm gonna end up using all of it because i i want it to be like really solidified it just looks so pretty like so much better than you know beef or like raw meat it's all colorful and it smells nice so this is kind of the consistency that we're looking for, something that's kind of, you know, not like a dough, but it can still be a little bit wet like this. So I'm just gonna get my potatoes boiling. All right, so as I said before, we don't have an, ov an oven in our tiny house. So I bought these little mini loaf pans and I'm gonna do this in the air fryer. And a lot of you guys have been asking me about this um i absolutely love this thing it is the new wave brio i am in no way sponsored i paid for this thing bought it off amazon myself um but what i did was i basically just measured the inside of the fry pan and i found these little mini loaf pans that will fit inside of here so this is like tiny house cooking 101 here so basically, I'm just going to put my batter inside these loaf pans and cook it like it were a real oven. If you guys have an oven, then do this in an oven. Like, don't do this in an air fryer, obviously. Um, but if you have an air fryer, I will leave the link to these pans below. And I would just measure and make sure that they'll fit in your specific air fryer. But... I really have high hopes for this. 
So if you have a normal oven, you can obviously just put this in a big non-stick loaf pan and cook it all at once. I'm going to do these on 350 degrees for probably 15 minutes and see how that turns out. But like I said, I will be doing an entire blog post on this entire thing. So all of my trial and error will be excluded from that and you guys will have the legit recipes. This is just how I gotta do this living in a tiny house. So I'm just going to put these back in the air fryer on 350. All right, so our potatoes are done. Basically just cook them for about 15 minutes. You want them like really soft. The softer that they are, the easier it's gonna be to make them really creamy. So I'm just gonna pour out this water. All of the cooking water I'm gonna pour out. And then we're gonna blend these with an immersion blender. If you guys don't have one of these, honestly, it's like one of the best tools that I could recommend to anybody. If you're like new to a vegan diet, I know there's a lot of things that people recommend like a Vitamix and a food processor and air fryers and instant pots and all that kind of stuff. But this is like a five in one tool. You can use it as a food processor. You can use it as a blender to make like dressings or smoothies or whatever. Honestly, like if I was super, super minimalist and had to travel and stuff, this would be the thing that I have. So all we're gonna do now is add in about a teaspoon each of garlic powder and onion powder. Then we're gonna add in nutritional yeast. So however much you want, we like a lot of it, but I'll probably just go with half a cup today because you can't overdose on nutritional yeast, right? And then to make this super creamy, we're gonna be using a soy milk. Or you could use an almond milk, you could use a cashew milk. Just make sure that you're not using a milk that's like sweetened or a milk that has flavoring. Sometimes people make the mistake of using like a vanilla soy milk and it totally ruins like everything. What? I just wanna get some water. Oh, okay. Well, there is no water left. Do you wanna look right? So the soy milk that I use for basically everything is this one by West Soy, and it's just an organic, unsweetened, plain soy milk. And the reason that I like it is there's no sugar in it, there's no salt in it, it's literally just filtered water and whole organic soybeans. So this is the one that I use, but like I said, just use whatever you're, you're used to or whatever you like. So how I do this is I just start blending it and then I pour the soy milk in until I get the consistency that I want. So I'll probably use, because we used a pound and a half of tom pota tomatoes, potatoes, I'll probably use about half a cup to three fourths of a cup of soy milk. You can do the same thing in your Vitamix or your food processor. Just kind of put all the ingredients in there, start processing it, and then slowly pour the soy milk in. And I swear you guys, this is how you get the creamiest mashed potatoes on planet Earth. So I'm just adding like a little bit of parsley. Special taste tester. Does it look good? Looks so good. Get a thumbnail shot. See what it looks like? It looks literally just like meatloaf. It does. Ah, oh, it's so good. Mmm, those potatoes are so good. Potatoes sound like your mom. That is good. Mm hmm. I feel like when you cut it, it's just like actually like a. It's actually like a meatloaf consistency. It is, totally. No like caramelized ketchup on top. Mm. I give it a solid eight and a half. We'll step it up a little bit. Yeah, you gotta start giving things like nines. You're killing my ego here. 85 is really good. 85 out of 100. Rate them individually though. Mm. I'll give the potatoes a nine and the lentil loaf an eight and a half. The 
but that puts my total at like 8.75. Maybe when I make the dessert, I'll give it 10. Maybe. And yeah, the really potatoes good. are the bomb. Mm -hmm. They're like creamy, but there's like chunks of potato in it. So flavorful. Mm -hmm. You always give everything an eight, but then you finish everything. So what we're gonna actually do once I make the dessert in the next video is we're gonna do like a mukbang of all of this mm. so that you guys can watch it. And we'll just talk about, well, let us know what you want us to talk about. But we'll probably just talk about like, what's it been like living in a tiny house mm. and moving off grid and yeah. Yeah, all those kinds of things. All that kind of stuff. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next video. Peace. Peace. Peace.